everybody. Awesome. Okay, so for all of those that are here today, um, we are going to record this event. Um, that way, as people trickle in, if they miss anything, they can just watch it. Um, all the videos from DevMeets are on the live page on Bottega University's website. Um, so you'll be able to see those. It usually takes about a week for us to put it back up there, but um, that way you guys have access to it. So for those of you um, who don't know who I am, I'm Christina. I'm part of the career services team here. Um, today, we have the pleasure of hearing from Sam Cook. I'm really excited. Um, Sam is a Bottega alumni um, who graduated in April of 2021. He is a self-driven full stack developer and he's currently doing an internship and he's actually gonna talk to us about it and kind of his experiences with tech in general. So without further ado, I'm turning the time over to you, Sam. Awesome. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for um, the invite. Yeah, so I started my uh, tech journey uh, about this time last year. Um, I graduated from SUU, which uh, Southern Utah University, which is uh, the university in the town that I am uh, uh, in, in Cedar City, very sort of 30,000 people. Um, uh, graduated with a degree in philosophy and history, so uh, definitely not sort of tech related, but I decided to make the pivot with sort of COVID and stuff. Um, it just sort of made sense uh, given where I was at and how I was sort of interested in, in tech and stuff um, for a while. So anyway, yeah, so, so I made this transition. I went through the full stack development um, course and I've been um, sort of working my way through and trying to break into the industry for a while um, now. So graduated in April and so the way that I decided to sort of primarily go about doing that was through combination of freelance work and then this internship um, and sort of tonight's topic is both of those things. So I can sort of share my experience uh, with both of those. So I am, um, so I'll, I, I'll start with the internship. Um, so Snow College is another smaller universe, smaller college in Utah. It had, and they have one lead web developer. And then during the school year, he has some student help, but during the summer, he ends up losing that student help because the students go home. Um, and I, my, my dad works at the university and, uh, or at the college and he knows um, Jim Bob, uh, who is the, the web developer there. And uh, Jim Bob just had mentioned that he had needed some help. So I reached out and said, hey, um, you know, I, I heard you needed some help. Uh, would you be interested in having me basically be an intern for you over the next couple of months until school starts again? And you get your help back. And he said, yeah, that'd be great. I really would appreciate that. So um, it was uh, interesting because uh, they use a content management system, the Omni content management system, and they use the XML markup language. So there was a bit of a learning curve. Um, and then there was, you know, the bay, but a lot of it was within the same sort of uh, orbit as what I had learned at Bottega. So I was able to bring a lot of, I think, valuable um, experience to bear. And then I, I've, I've learned a lot. Um, the primary project we've been working on has been the uh, Severe Valley Center uh, website, which is a, an event center in Ridgefield, Utah, that has, uh, that has a, a home on an older server. It's uh, run on the cold fusion system and is outside of their Omni CMS uh, system. So, Part of the project that he just said, you know, whenever you get, you get time to do this, uh, go and uh, transfer over all of the stuff from the old Severe Valley Center project uh, into the content management system and get it consolidated. So that's what I've been working on the last little bit. Uh, we just finished up the last piece, uh, the gallery piece last week. So I'm just waiting for him to sign off on that. And then it'll be uh posted and, and transferred, the, the domain will be transferred to the work that I did. So that's kind of what I've been doing with Snow College. But that was, I, I think it's sort of uh, 
is a great example of an option of what you can do. People are more than happy usually to have help, um, especially if it's for free. If you're in a place to do that, um, to gain experience and connections, reaching out to local organizations that you know have uh, like a web development team of some kind and mentioning, you know, hey, I'm a recent graduate from a boot camp. I'm looking to get real world experience with a team of some kind uh, with sort of whatever your tech stack is at this company. And just reaching out and mentioning, you know, here's my contact info. Let me know if you need some help. Um, in my experience, it's uh, a lot of people will will take that sort of off the bat, and you know who knows that can potentially transform into a full time position, um, given that you sort of have a degree of proficiency in whatever tech stack that they use. So, um, with regards to internships, you know a lot of people just look at uh, things like Indeed or LinkedIn or the really great service Handshake to find internships uh, for recent graduates and stuff. But another option is sort of a more informal internship where you can sort of network and build connections with people just by sort of offering your services, telling people what uh, you're good at and what you like doing. And if they need your help, they, in my experience, will accept it. Um, so, that's the internship that I've been working on. Um, you know, it's been really pretty hands off. I live in a different um, county than Snow College, so it's full, been fully remote. He'll just uh, email me with, "Hey, I need X, Y, and Z done," and then I'll I'll get it done as needed, and he'll sign off on it and, and get it posted. So, um, it's been pretty informal, pretty uh, laid back. Um, so. I would say that it's a pretty decent option or, or idea if you have a university um, or college in the town that you live, finding, reaching out to their web services team and mentioning, you know, hey, I'm a recent graduate. I'd be happy to, to lend some help if you need. Um, I guess it, to some degree, I was lucky because I have, you know, some connections with the, the college already. So, you know, I'd say, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to reach out um, and put your name out there. So uh, then the other thing that I've been doing has been freelance work. Um, so um, all of this to the, the goal or to the end of building up a portfolio. So what I have been doing primarily for freelance is a lot of the same sort of techniques, as I mentioned, with the with the internship. I just um, I, I have connections, people that I know who work for uh, organizations or companies that need, uh, you know, website or website maintenance. So um, what I did for my capstone project, and as my first sort of big um, project on my own was I got in touch with a local nonviolence or um, anti-domestic violence organization. Uh, my wife works there and she had mentioned that they needed help with their website. Their website was just hosted on Wix, which is, you know, one of these just sort of build your own sort of content management systems. And it just wasn't exactly getting the job done of what they needed to help sort of provide resources for survivors and um, stay in contact with uh, the community and get donations. So um, I offered my uh, services to build them a new website. And uh, over a couple of months, I worked with their in-house graphic designer and the sort of public relations manager to make sure that their new website that I built using React and then the, the Firebase backend um, to really align with their new branding. Their old website was super out of date. Uh, going with um, sort of their older branding from a couple of years ago. The donation page was kind of a mess, which is a big problem because part of the point of the website was to uh, uh, solicit donations. So the, the new website that I built um, um, is currently live and, and works great for them. And it has been able to sort of get um, be much more to uh, their needs. I built basically a, an in, um, in-app content management system where they can um, 
log in using admin functionality to change different features and um, posts and pictures on the website. Um, and because of that, all of these different elements come together to form a really pretty impressive project to have on my portfolio. Um, and so things like that can be great for to, to build up experience. Um, and I did that pro bono um, because it was my capstone project and my, my wife had uh, been wanting me to do it for a while and I was happy to do it. So, and sort of volunteer that time. So that's another thing that I would mention, look for um, organizations that um, operate on like a nonprofit basis where they don't have a lot of sort of wiggle room for um, with regards to their budgets. And if you offer your services for free or for a, a well below sort of market rate, they'll be pretty excited because a lot of these websites for these types of organizations, domestic violence shelters, homeless shelters, even th like animal shelters and stuff um, are usually pretty lackluster because they don't have a very big budget for things like a web presence. And it's a great way to gain a lot of experience and at the same time also have a lot of sort of wiggle room with how you go about doing it because you're not going to have much oversight. So you're going to be pretty independent. You're going to be able to gain a lot of uh, really important experience in trying and failing, which is what I did for a while building that website, but um, I'm a better developer for it. So um, that is the um, sort of second piece of advice I would say is like, you know, if you, if you can't set up some sort of long-term sort of internship relationship with an organization, either through applying or through just personal connections, um, just reaching out to local um, businesses that uh, either don't have a website or have a website that maybe could use some help. And they will, you know, a lot of the time will be, they'll jump at the opportunity. A lot of the time they will be very well aware of the state of their website. And because of that, they'll be really excited when somebody uh, with experience and enthusiasm is uh, interested in, in working on their website. So um, that would be sort of that second piece of advice, uh, just looking um, in local sort of Facebook groups or what you know locally of sort of organizations and then finding the email of an executive director or, or public relations manager and just uh, asking them, you know, hey, would you like me to work on your website for you? We can you know, chat and uh, get a sense of what exactly you're wanting. Um, I'm currently uh, in the process of, of starting to work on the website. This, this is just in collaboration with the guy who has built it um, in WordPress. And so I'll be gaining sort of that experience because I don't have much ex experience with WordPress um, with another um, domestic violence organization um, it's in Richfield. Um, and, and that one will be sort of paid. Uh, so these types of things, you can end up building a rapport and building a niche. And these types of organizations are, will be really grateful. And um, from my experience and from what I've been told, these types of uh, organizations, nonprofits, uh, are, it's a, usually a pretty tight-knit community. So if, you, you know, your name will be uh, pretty well known at this point um, if you work with one group they'll be happy to sort of in, endorse your skills and then you can turn that into sort of a long-term sort of freelance thing which is kind of what i've been working on doing to continue building up my portfolio and and um, increase my skills as, de as a developer and then sort of the final thing that i really want to uh, touch on with regard to sort of freelance sort of internship experience gaining um, uh, is uh, talk to your friends or people that you know. You don't even need to, to work with organizations. Um, I just, the, the, one of the projects I just finished, um, in fact, got it deployed and the domain acquired and everything today, was I built an art portfolio for a friend of mine who needed one. Um, she's an artist and wanted a, a site to host her, her art and also have a way to contact her and that sort of thing. Um, and I said, hey, you know, you design me a tattoo, I'll build you a website. And then, you know, it works out really well for both of us. We both get sort of the um, experience and the, um, we get to sort of refine our craft a little bit more. And it's in an environment that is sort of pretty low pressure. 
You don't need to really worry about um, your friend really breathing down your neck if you're wanting to experiment with some things, if you're wanting to uh, maybe, you know, if you have a framework, uh, I know um, Bottega's sort of primary JavaScript framework that they teach is React, but if you're wanting to learn Angular, that's a great way to do it. Um, sort of where you can, um, and at the same time, put that project in your portfolio. So um, that's what I would, uh, th that's another thing that I'd recommend. You know, if you have friends who are artists, if you have friends who are voice actors, if you have friends who are writers or whatever, and they're looking for a place to host their work, um, that's a great option. And then something that I've been sort of working on and, and talking with uh, local businesses about um, is local restaurants, a lot of the time will wanna have a website that has their menu, but a lot of the time they are also to the, the owners or whatever of these sort of small businesses are too busy or um, have too many sort of plates in the air at one time to really focus on getting a, a good website up. And it's a, it's a big deal. I mean, for me, if I want to try a website, I'll Google it first or I'll try a restaurant. I'll Google it first, see what their menus like, see what their, and if it's an unimpressive website, I'll be turned off to that. So sort of pitching it that way to a business, um, they'll be, in my experience, pretty receptive to offers. Um, and so fundamentally, I guess the big, in a walnut message that I have for tonight is don't be afraid to just sort of put yourself out there, put your name out there as someone in the community with these skills, because as you get more experience working for people in your community and businesses and organizations, people are going to um, be really appreciative of that. So in my case, you know, working with a, a well-known, very popular um, anti-domestic violence organization in Cedar City has sort of given me this credibility to work with some of the small businesses here in town. So all of these things sort of work together in a way that is really, I think can be really helpful in advancing your career. Um, it really makes your, your portfolio look really good. Um, in my case, sort of volunteering for nonprofits um, um, has opened the door now to where I, I just interviewed for like a job last week with a company that builds websites for nonprofits. So it's the, it opens doorways in a way that you can um, have a lot of real world experience that didn't come from the grind of having to apply for things on LinkedIn or Indeed or Glassdoor or um, even through Handshake or whatever. You can just reach out and they'll say, yeah, great, please do. When can you start? And then you can start putting those projects on your portfolio. And then as you're applying for jobs, um, as I have been, you can bring up that experience and say, yeah, I, I have experience working directly with clients. I have experience um, uh, being very communicative and open. Um, I, I'm, I'm confident in the work that I do enough to reach out to people. So there's stuff like that that um, are sort of outside of the scope of just sort of traditional sort of technical practice that you'll be getting from these type of opportunities to um, also just making you a better candidate for um, jobs in the future and for advancing your career sort of and taking it to that next level. Um, and then the other option is too, um, if you really enjoy sort of that freedom, um, options like Freelancer and Upwork and Fiverr can turn into sort of a career. Like you can do that um, if you get a, a good enough of a reputation where you can you can make a really a, a pretty good living and really refine your craft doing a lot of different projects short term um, short to sort of the medium term on a contract basis and um, that's an, that's another great option um, one that um, I don't really have much of an interest in exploring permanently but definitely something that is is doable so with so to sort of wrap up and, and conclude I'd say the, the biggest piece of advice that I'd have is don't be afraid to just put yourself out there. Just you know, get an email or a phone number um, and say, hey, I'm this person, I live locally, and you know, I'd love to work with you on sort of your website. And from there, um, you can build a portfolio, 
you can build sort of an impressive skill set, and then um, depending on what you want to do with the rest of your career, either it provides a nice springboard into sort of uh, the next level of uh, junior or sort of mid-level uh, development position, or you know you can do that freelance thing permanently um, or for as long as you want. Um, so yeah, put yourself out there, be familiar with the community that you live, um, but you also don't have to be restricted to that. You know, uh, you can you can move beyond that to the state uh, level and that sort of thing. So anyway, um, that would be the advice I would give um, if this is something that you're sort of interested in doing and, and really wanting to get an impressive portfolio and really refine those technical skills that you've kind of gotten from like uh, uh, what, whatever sort of development camp um, or skill set that you've acquired, so. Awesome, awesome. I feel like you're gonna echo a lot of stuff that I'll go over in the work, uh, the workshop I'm doing later. You have like hitting points that I'm like, I'm gonna talk about that later. So that's awesome. Um, one of the things that I actually, um, oh, so before I jump into this, um, if you guys have questions for uh, Sam, there is a chat function. Go ahead and put it in there. We'll go through them. Um, while we're waiting for those, I do have a couple of questions that I wanted to ask you if that's okay. Yeah, totally. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, one of the questions that I had for you, um, you know, in the full stack program, we do a lot of theory work. We do a lot of hypotheticals. What was the biggest thing that you found surprising when you started working freelance and with your internship? What were some of the stuff that you were kind of surprised or just kind of no took note of? Yeah, a big part of it is a lot of the assignments or projects or things that you're going to be asked to do, you're not going to have the particular knowledge of what exactly you need to do given the project. But what you can do is sort of take the big picture theoretical um, principles that have been sort of imparted on you and then use using, um, in my case, using Google a lot uh, alongside sort of those big picture um, programming principles, you can um, sort of narrow it down to um, figuring out exactly what is needed to uh, accomplish the, the particular task that sort of you've been asked to do. Um, so, and then the other thing that I would, I would say is um, at least in the internship, you know, if you're honest, like, yeah, I'm a newer developer. I don't know exactly what to do here. Asking for help or, or sitting down and sort of having a conversation with whoever you're working with uh, can be really helpful. So that's what those two things I would say are sort of the big, uh, I, I would say are the, the big piece of advice in sort of translating the theoretical to the practical in that you, you just need to know what you don't know, I guess, and, and be humble and not try and fit a square peg in a round hole because um, not every technique is going to work for every instance. So it's sort of being aware of that and, and conscientious of exactly where you're at in relation to whatever specific project you're working on. Oh yeah, I think it's it's funny. There's not a lot of um, professions where Google can be part of your knowledge base. Like, absolutely, I don't, I don't know how to do that. I'll Google it. <laughs> um, but that's awesome, and I do like how you touched on. You know, you kind of have to be fluid. You can't accept that you know everything up front because you don't. You're a junior. You're you're just starting out, and um, you have to be open to saying I don't know, <laughs> but I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And being teachable too, of being you know um, willing to say I don't know, and then sort of sit down. And if someone does know uh, that you're working with, you know, being willing to accept their advice and everything that you can um, actually get the whatever project uh, done. So. Nice, nice. And you had talked about with your internship, there was a lead um, software developer, and he basically would delegate things to you as well. Can you tell me a little bit about what your relationship with him is in far as far as like professionally? So if let's say down the road, there's another opening, is he like an asset in your network now? Are you able to kind of lean on him is kind of what I'm getting at? Yeah, absolutely. So that was a big part of uh, my motivation to want to um, 
sort of work with him was he's a developer who's been in the industry for 15 years. He's uh, old, um, you know, he, he's been in it a long time and he moved to Richfield because that's where he's from originally. So he, he was able to land a job with snow. And he, so he has sort of that, that credibility and he's got that wisdom that can sort of be passed on, um, especially with regards to the particular sort of content management system that we're working with. And then, yeah, I, we, um, I built up, I think a good enough of a rapport and I've been able to get enough projects sort of under my belt for him or, or pieces of this sort of bigger project on my own done for him that he can sort of testify to my capability as a developer. So he is a reference that I put down like on my resume, um, especially for jobs that use like Omni CMS because he's a person that um, uh, is a, sort of a veteran using it. And so if I'm applying for a job that uses that, putting him down and so then he can uh, testify to my capabilities and, and my skills um, is really useful. Um, something else I'll mention though too is um, a lot of my freelance clients I've also put down as references as well because um, a lot of jobs at least in my experience in the last uh, couple of months with all of the with the um, jobs that I've interviewed for and stuff they've been looking for um, a lot of people who are interested who are able and comfortable with like sort of client facing work to some degree and putting those freelance clients down who may not you know they'll say yeah technically speaking he got what I wanted finished. I don't know how he did it because I am, you know, not necessarily literate with that sort of thing, but he got it done and he did it in a way that was really sort of clearly communicated uh, back and forth between what the needs of the project were. And so putting those down um, for jobs that are more client facing has been really beneficial because then they can refer to them at, that I not only have those skills as a developer, which are really great and important, um, but also those soft skills that are really going to be defining for a job, especially one that has a lot of sort of client facing elements to it. Oh, yeah. No, it's 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 very important that, you know, having those soft skills that you can demonstrate and have people um, vouch for them as well is so like um, such an asset for you just because it's easy to show, hey, I can code in X, Y, and Z. Or here's my my portfolio, but it's hard to say I can do client facing um, software engineering projects. It's hard to do that without having someone say, yeah, he did. I can vouch for that. <laughs> right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so we're going to go ahead and push over into the, uh, the workshop. Uh, but first I want to thank you, Sam, so much for coming and talking with us. Um, I really love how, you know, even from day one, you've been very much, a, I'm going to go and do this and um, self-driven and very organized. I think those are skills that um, as developers, we definitely need to learn how to develop. Um, things don't just happen. You've got to do work. You've got to reach out. You've got to open your mouth. And I think that you're definitely a great um, example of that. You're definitely someone who knows how to ask what he wants and ask people for help. So I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks. That's a, that's a great compliment. I appreciate that. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to move into the uh, workshop now. We're going to talk about um, networking and freelance work. Surprise, surprise. Um, give me one second while I share my screen for you guys. Here we go. And if you guys have questions throughout this, you feel free to um, just jump on and uh, put them in the chat function, right? Right on the side there, put them in the chat function and I will just jump on them as they come through. Um, but we're just gonna zoom through all of this. So um, if any of you have done uh, the networking one-on-ones with me, you've probably seen some of this information. It's a little bit familiar. Um, for those of you that uh, haven't, those are very much option for you guys. Um, if you're wanting to do one-on-ones with us, uh, with me or with anyone in the career uh, building team, um, reach out to us, uh, career services at bottega.edu. We are more than happy to set up time to talk with you guys, but we're going to go over kind of the big picture of networking. Um, I'm going to go over not just how to do it, but all the benefits. Why do we do it? I, I know Sam going to be echoing some of Sam's uh, wonderful material, but we're just kind of going to go over it a little bit more. So 
the first thing that I often get is, um, I think networking is where I just reach out and ask for people to hire me. And that's not actually how networking works. It is to a degree, but it's not really how that works. So um, networking is actually about creating a share bond with someone that has similar goals, values, and interests. Um, this has a lot to do with creating a network of those uh, people. So whether that's um, people that own businesses, um, Sam was amazing at being able to connect with nonprofits. Um, he used his community, but also um, fellow software engineers. So senior software engineers, junior software engineers, um, you really just wanna build out kind of this network of people that you can rely on for information support and for people that you can do the same for them as well. So it's kind of a give and take. So one of the questions we get a lot is, uh, why should I network? Um, and so there's obviously some, some easy ones there, but we'll kind of go over some of the benefits. Uh, one of them is obviously job opportunities, whether that's freelance or even full-time positions or internships. Um, being a part of a network allows you to have your ear to the ground and be able to hear what's coming down the pipeline. So it's always nice to have a well-rounded network to be able to do that. Um, another one is industry connections. Um, and what that kind of uh, stands for there is, even if you're connecting with people that aren't hiring, you are still gonna be able to create network and uh, partnerships with people that will help you grow as a software engineer, as a professional. These are people that you know, you're gonna pro help provide them with support and they're gonna help you provide you with support. So um, still great value. Another one is new learning opportunities. Um, so when it comes to uh, networking, um, one of the things that people kind of overlook is, um, have you ever tried to talk to someone about tech to a non-tech person? And they give you the look of like, I have no idea what you're talking about and they can't contribute. It's always really frustrating. Um, and so one of the things that's really nice about having a network of other fellow uh, tech uh, people is you've got people to talk shop with, people to build on top of ideas and build out your skills together. Another one is peer review. So when you're working in a software engineering team, you'll have what are called peer reviews. Um, pretty simple. Basically what they are is after you build an application, your team will go through and review it with you. They'll tell you what you did wrong, what you can change, how to fix stuff. Um, these are probably the most valuable information you're going to get because you're going to get senior developers telling you the secret sauce, the, okay, that's not how that works, or that's how this works. But when you're doing networking, you can build your own peer review. You can build your own group of people to help build out your portfolio, help you become well-rounded as a, as a developer. So great resource there. Um, obviously, you can get career advice. And then the last one is emotional health. And I know that sounds a little weird, but we as people want to feel like we're connected with a group. We want to feel supported. We want to have our own gang that we can go to and talk shop. So um, definitely one of those benefits is having a network is not just about looking for a job. It's about creating Creating your own comfort zone, your group of people that, um, you know, you just finished a project and you can't wait to share it with them. You want to show it to them. You want to get people's um, input. Um, it's more than just about getting a job. It's about finding your people. So amazing benefit there. Um, okay, so we'll kind of go in a little bit into like, how do I network? I often get people that say, I don't know how to network. What I'm trying isn't working. So I think networking doesn't work. Um, but really, there's not really a way to go wrong with networking. It's just you got to keep doing it. So we'll kind of go over how to network and some of the um, the individual stuff there. Give me one second here. There we go. Sorry. Okay, so how do I network? So I've got a couple of tips here. Um, one is to join uh, developer networks. So things like Stack Overflow, uh, GitHub, their collaborations tab is amazing. Go on and join uh, projects with people. Um, you've got developer Slack channels. Um, these are really great. I've got one that I'm a part of. It's JavaScript and that's Utah. It's here in, uh, for the Salt Lake channel. Um, what's nice is you can Google it. So I would just Google whatever language that you're really into right now and look for a Slack channel that has the most users and then join it and contribute to the channel. That's the biggest thing I would say. A lot of this isn't just you you go in and you uh, just become a part of it and that's it. You need to contribute. You need to become part of the community. So that's one big tip I would give. Um, you've also got things like meetups. A lot of those are remote now, so they're great. You can uh, join groups or even host your own. They're great for networking. Um, we've also got a developer Discord channels. Same thing like Slack. 
find a language you like, find a, an aspect you like, and join a, a channel and start contributing to that channel. Uh, one that I think gets overlooked a lot is Reddit. <laughs> Give me one second here, sorry. Uh, one of the ones that I would say is Reddit. Oh, sorry, guys is Reddit. It's kind of one of those ones that are overlooked a lot. Um, guaranteed that if you've got a problem with a code and you can't figure it out, uh, someone's talked about it on Reddit. Uh, it's just how it is. And what's nice is a lot of people like to share their work on Reddit and collaborate. So another great place to go. LinkedIn, obviously. Um, with LinkedIn, so LinkedIn is great because you can search for things like a company, who are their employees, who is in their software development team and then who is their senior developer like all through LinkedIn you can find all that out um, if you ever want to actually do a one-on-one -on -one with me with how to use LinkedIn to its fullest potential go ahead and schedule something with me um, reach out to us uh, career services at bottega.edu I'm more than happy to schedule something with you guys uh, that is a tool that seriously cannot be understated it's amazing and then, of course, volunteer work, kind of like what Sam had talked about, finding a niche, finding something that um, with him, it's it's nonprofits. Um, once you get your name out there, it becomes synonymous with good work, with with good effort. So it's kind of nice to kind of find your niche, but also volunteer work is amazing to do for that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit now about um, how to use your circle of influence. I'm going to touch on it, and then we're going to talk more about it when I get into freelance work. So. Um, First off for this one, so you'll see here, you've got the little diagram here. So you've got your inner circle. This is friends and family in the very middle. Um, these are people that you have a good connection with. You have a, a great uh, sense of influence over. Friends, family, um, people that you've been friends with for years. Like these are great. Uh, this is probably the one that I would say focus on a lot first um, and then move out uh, in, in branches. So the next one would be like friends of friends. So these are people where you know them, you've worked with them maybe, but you don't really know them very much, but you still know them. And then outside of that is everyone else. Um, so what I would recommend doing is when using your circle of influence, the first thing you would do is categorize everyone, figure out all of the opportunities you have for people that you know, and then you wanna reach out and explain your goals. Um, and then from there, you want to explain how they can help and then have a call to action. So I'll kind of give you an example. So let's say you're reaching out to your aunt and you said, um, hey, aunt, uh, Sally, this is Christina. I'm a recent uh, software developer graduate. As you know, I've recently graduated. I'm trying to build out my portfolio. And I saw that you actually work for a company that does dog grooming, but you guys don't have a website. I'd love to build it out for you. I would think that'd be awesome a project. Uh, that was something that you'd be interested in. Or how can I help? You know, something simple as that. Whereas, you know, using using the family that you have to help build out your portfolio, kind of like what Sam says, when you're doing stuff like this, like like reaching out and helping people out because it's family, because it's friends, it's low standard. It's kind of like a sandbox. You're starting to learn stuff. You're OK with with messing up. You're OK with making mistakes because it's your first time and everyone understands that you're just doing this to help. So it's kind of nice. Um, and this also works with networking as well. Um, let's say you're reaching out to a fellow coder and they're a senior and you want to say something to the extent of, I'm new to software industry. Um, I'm a recent graduate. I'm a junior developer. I'd love to talk to you about your company and what it's like to work there. Um, as you know, I don't have a lot of experience and I'd love to kind of pick your brain. Just something simple as that. Just a simple let's meet and talk and see if, if there is something between that we can actually build off of. Not very hard, but also really valuable to do. Um, the next tip I would have is participating in networking events, um, even virtual ones. So job fairs are amazing to do this at. Um, I know that each state actually has it through their Department of Workforce Labor. They'll have a, a job fair uh, that they host, but then also other people will do it as well as remote or locally. So um, those are great, not just for finding jobs, but also for networking and finding fellow developers uh, to connect with. Uh, meetups, obviously. Um, Fairstream is actually a partner of ours. Um, they do networking events. They're phenomenal. If you actually go to fairstream.com and they go to their um, events page, you will find tons of events, uh, things ranging from coding to um, networking in general, software engineering companies. 
they're they're great. So go ahead and utilize that. It's a great resource. Uh, another one along that same line would be uh, React Hire. Um, sorry, Reach Hire. And so what they do is they specifically do networking. So they work with the people that have left the work industry for a while and they want to come back afterwards, and they help coach you into getting back into the work force. Um, it's really great because they work at every people's level. So you know they understand people come back and their schedule may not be the same as theirs and they're willing to work with you. So it's kind of nice. And then you've got stuff like Eventbrite, which is great for networking and events. Um, and then there's another one that actually recently came up, which is Power to Fly. Um, they are going to be having a career fair in September, um, which we're going to be sending you guys information on how to sign up for that in the next few weeks. But that's amazing. It's going to be specifically for people trying to break into the industry and those trying to get back into the industry. So it's kind of a, a little bit of both, which is really nice. Um, here we go. All right. So. Any questions so far on, on this? If so, go ahead and put them in the chat function. Give me one second. Oh, I think I might have missed a few. So sorry, give me one second, guys. Oh. Okay, let's see here. Okay, so I've got a couple of comments here. So one of them is from Delphia. She says that um, it is good advice to contribute. Absolutely. It's also a good learning experience because working with a team, you can learn stuff from other people, which is awesome. Um, Leonard says that it's nice to have Discord. Discord's my favorite. I love using that. Um, and so, yeah. All right. Let's see. Okay. Let's jump into the next section now. Okay. Okay, so prep work before the event. So let's say you're like, I'm gonna go to a career fair. There are some stuff you need to do beforehand. Uh, you need to be prepared. <laughs> so uh, one of the things is obviously, uh, let's say you're into a, a career fair, you need to have your resume, you need to have your cover letter. Um, you definitely need to have your LinkedIn and your portfolio. But then the last thing is you need to dress the part. Um, if this is virtual, make sure there's something behind you. Make sure you at least have a virtual screen if you need to, like I do here. Um, but be clean, be, you know, dress professionally. If it's in person, doubly so. Make sure that you're dressing the part. Um, but then just, you know, just make sure that you're putting your best foot forward for those events. Um, the next thing I would recommend is setting clear goals. Um, and this can be something as simple as I want to have two really good conversations, or I want to, you um, I want to send out one resume or I want to find one person to collaborate with. Um, it doesn't need to be anything big, but it needs to be a clear, defined goal. Um, if you go to the website for Bottega University, bottega.edu slash goals dash setting, um, we have tons of articles on there that talks about how to set good goals, but also how to set good career goals. Um, so go ahead and check that out. That is amazing resource to use. Um, but yeah, just have clear goals. Make sure that you know what you want to achieve from this and be okay with finding even more. You know? <laughs> okay, so the other thing I want you to work on is developing an elevator pitch. These are really simple. It's just uh, you want to find a summary of what makes you awesome as a developer and then summarize it down so that if anyone ever asked, okay, well, tell me about yourself, you've got a set of something to actually talk about. Um, so, for instance, it could be I'm a junior software developer. I'm currently working on a project that does X, Y, and Z, and I really like software engineering because of this. Something very simple that just kind of explains who you are, what you like, and it's quick and easy that they kind of get the idea of who you are. And then after the event, this is usually what people tend to forget is the follow up. Um, rule of thumb is usually about two to three work days. Um, work days, you want to do a follow up. So uh, make notes at the event. So let's say you talk to somebody who works over at uh, Weebly and you want to then reach back out to them and say something to the extent of, hey, Frank, this is Christina. We met at the event. Um, we talked a little bit about X, Y, and Z. I just wanted to kind of pick up our conversation where we left off. When would be a good time for us to, to talk or when would be a good time for us to look over stuff? Super simple, but make sure that you're following up and getting back on their minds because just like probably everyone else after an event, or we have that goldfish mindset of like, oh, okay, the, the event is over and I forget everything. <laughs> but you wanna make sure that you get back on their minds on following few days, so. Okay, so some outcomes to look for with 
networking. And I'm going to kind of go into some of the options. These aren't the only options for networking. These are just some. So one thing that you can look for for networking is finding a mentor. Mentors are phenomenal. These are uh, senior developers that have wealth of knowledge that you can pull from and get critiques and have them be able to help peer review all your projects and things like that. But they're also great for getting career advice. They've been there, they've done that. They're gonna be able to help you you know, navigate stuff and be able to lean on them. So it's kind of nice. Um, another thing that you can look for is to finding people to collaborate on projects. Um, this is an amazing skill to have, being able to learn from others, build out projects and be able to just kind of get that whole group vibe going. It's it's phenomenal. It's really, really great. Um, another one is obviously job opportunities. Um, you've got career advice, new skills to learn. And then the last one would be freelance work. Networking uh, to, you know, to the goal of getting freelance work is very similar to just networking in general. It's just you know, here's another thing that I can offer. It looks like you have a need. I want to help. So it's kind of nice. Um, any questions so far on this? Okay. If there's any questions or if you guys need me to slow down, let me know. Um, but we'll kind of jump to the next one, which is going to be freelance work. So freelance work, uh, some of the benefits of it. I know Sam went over it a little bit earlier, but I'll kind of touch on it a little bit more as well. So one is building out your skills. Um, when it comes to software development, there is no greater teacher than actual experience. Um, you can work in theory all day, every day, and you'll still not learn as much as you will with an actual project. There will be um, hurdles to jump over. There will be you know, concepts that's gonna stretch you to your very, very end and you're not sure how to do it, but you have to figure it out. It's a great, it's a great skill building tool. And it's definitely an experience that I recommend that everyone try at least once, um, if not multiple times, if you can. Um, uh, you can also use freelance work to network. I know that sounds backwards, but kind of like what Sam says, he had done a good job with one organization and they vouched for him for another. They helped him network. So it's kind of, you need to network to get freelance, but freelance also helps you network. So it's kind of a, a two, a two giving kind of a gift there. Uh, learning new languages. Um, like in the full stack course, we learn new languages by doing. A lot of learning comes from doing. And so freelance projects allow you to do that. It pushes you to your edge to have to learn new stuff. Um, obviously it helps build out your portfolio, which is phenomenal. And it gives you a well-rounded portfolio, not just simple, small projects, but actual real life applications that people can go to and see the value in them. Um, as well as it does help work, build out your work experience for your resume. Um, kind of like what Sam also said before, um, this is a tool. So freelance can be used as a tool to help get you farther along in your career. Having work experience is going to set you apart from other people. You have real life experience, not only for soft skills, but also for technical skills. So this is an amazing tool to help fill out your resume so that there's a lot more tech related stuff in there and not just a lot of um, other stuff. So it's kind of nice. Um, and then the last benefit is fulfilling work and projects. Um, this is something that I think that we don't talk about a lot, but we as software engineers, we like to build. We want to build. We want to build things that are real, that people are using, that are benefiting others. And that's one of the benefits of freelance work is you're going to work on real projects that are be fulfilling so that you can be proud of and say, okay, I did that. That was mine. I, I built that and that makes me happy. Um, so we'll kind of go over to how do we find freelance work. Um, we're going to go back to the, the little circle diagram I have here. Um, the first step I would do is making a list of all your opportunities. Um, and this is something you'll just do over and over and over for however long you want to do this. So you're going to start in your middle circle. Think about friends, family, people that you've talked to over the past uh, few months, past few years. If anyone's ever mentioned that they need a website design, if anyone's ever talked about working for a company or starting a business, these are people that we want to put on the list and these are people that we want to reach out and basically explain what we want and kind of explain what to do next. So um, inner circle, friends and family, circle of influencer, friends of friends, and circle of uh, limited contact or, you know, clients, businesses, people that you know, people that you're not as connected with, but are on the outside. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to reach out um, to these groups and each group is going to be different. Your, your approach to your friends and family is going to be very different than from a business standpoint. Um, but you're going to create your own template. And then that way, when you go to reach out to each person on that list, it's just 
rinse and repeat. It's so much easier. You don't have to be so nervous about what to say. You just, you have a script, you modify it as you need to, but you just go and rinse and repeat. It's really nice. Um, and so with that one there, what you're going to do is uh, you're going to, first, you're going to talk about, this is what I want to do. I, I want to build up my portfolio or I'm looking for freelance clients and it is for charge or it's to build up my portfolio or whatever you want. Um, this is how you can help. I saw that you have a need and I want to help out with that. And a call to action. I am free to talk to you about this whenever you want. Here's my email. Let's, let's schedule an appointment or let's talk. Or if you want me to send you my portfolio, you can look at what I've done before. Super simple, but just a call to action. And that moves you to the next step. Now, the third thing is I talk about reaching out and planting seeds. If you've never heard of this term before, but basically the way it works is not everyone's gonna be ready right at the gate and you don't wanna burn bridges. So for instance, you may reach out to someone and they say, we don't really need a website designed today. That's okay. <laughs> what you'll end up saying is totally fine. I totally understand. I just thought I would uh, offer my help. Um, in the future, if you need help, let me know if you know of anyone i'd be super grateful if you'd send me their information i'd love to collaborate with them um, you could also take it to the route of if this is a person that's in the software development industry as well i'd be really happy to pick your brain on any project ideas that i have would that be something you'd be open to um, these are great don't don't take no for a no no is just i don't need it right now but we're still friends we can still collaborate we can still work together so um, plant seeds plant seeds and whoever you can and just let them know i'm here if you have anyone or if you know anyone. And then the last step is follow up. Um, again, I feel like I touch on this a lot, but follow ups are important. You want to keep reaching out to people. Okay. And this is the last slide. So we'll go through it because I'm running out of time. I'm sorry, guys. Um, okay. So what to look for? Business owners are great. Awesome. Just kind of said um, they have a lot on their plate. If they don't have time to build a website and if you can help out great um, people that work for companies that have websites and don't have websites um, oftentimes people have a website it was built a couple of years ago it's out of date kind of like what sam was saying the uh, thing that it was built on needed to be updated you can easily do that you can fix that um, people in the tech uh, community great for networking with um, also people in the, in the tech community if they're also doing freelance work sometimes something will come across their table they're like I don't have time for that let them know I am more than happy to help you out with that so if you have stuff that you guys can't do and that goes for freelance companies as well I'm more than happy to help out and do some contract work for you guys uh, those that have professions, another good one, people that are starting businesses, the very first step any company wants to do is build out a website. It's great to get there in the very first start. Um, nonprofits are a good one. And then those in the education realm is another good one, kind of like what Sam did where he reached out to Snow College. Um, th those are great avenues to reach out to. Um, okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about is Okay, so I've been doing freelance, I've been doing networking, I've got my resume, I've got my LinkedIn, I'm good to go. Now what? <laughs> I'm still applying, I haven't quite gotten hired yet. What do I do in the meantime? <laughs> That's a great question. You need to keep learning. If you don't, if you don't use your coding skills, they'll start to lose them. So keep coding, keep working. There are great sites like um, Free Code Camp, uh, Udemy, you could go to Bottega University, get a degree if you want. Um, you've got DevCamp, which you can go through and, and audit any of the full stack course that you did. Um, I really like DevCamp because there will be a concept that I, or a language that I did before, and I didn't quite grasp it fully. It's a little gray for me. I'll just go back and redo it, strengthen my skills, do a different project on it. You know brush on what you need to to keep your skills sharp and then the last one is projects projects are going to be the best learning experience as well as freelance work these are these are amazing they'll help you get way much farther um, and then the last question i just threw in here real quick would be um, deciding on what languages i want to work on there is no wrong answer to this any new language you learn is going to be a benefit um, whether that is um, you know any any sort of um, language that you want to learn for coding it's going to help you with another coding language um, whether that's understanding concept understanding structures so there's never going to be a wrong number but a wrong answer but here are some tips um, one thing to look for is to see what job postings are asking for so if you see okay a lot of these are asking for um, a certain framework that i don't know put that on your list start learning that start doing projects with that 
get, get a little bit better at it. Another one is skills needed for projects in freelance. Um, this is phenomenal. If you uh, have a project, you find that you're like, I really want to do this, but there's a language I don't quite know how to do, how to do it. Bite the bullet, just do it. Start learning the code, start doing the project, push yourself because it's going to be the best learning experience you can do. And then the last one is strengthen the skills that you already have. Kind of like what I said before with DevCamp. And by the way, you all have lifetime access to DevCamp. I don't know if you guys know this, but it, you know we update our system all the time with new curriculum, with new stuff that's new, like uh, industry standards. Go on it whenever you want. And if you see something that you haven't actually done, it'll show you in your dev camp. Oh, it looks like you haven't watched this. Brush up, take advantage of it. It's there for you for that reason. Um, but anyway, so, so strength and skills that you, know, you may not have been as strong at, make them your strength. Don't be afraid to go a little bit farther on that. Okay, so I've got five minutes. We'll quickly go over um, questions. Let's see here. Okay, so uh, Shiloh, uh, he says that he hasn't done the full stack program um, since he did it with Botega, the Ruby on Rails back in 2018, because I have been in order for the Navy since then. I'm looking at learning Python and React. How much time per day or week should I be dedicating to learning new languages? Um, this is a great uh, question. So if you're trying to learn a new skill, um, do as much as you can. <laughs> I, I generally say at least an hour a day of coding. That that's just a bare minimum. You should at least be doing an hour a day to keep your skills strengthened. Um, for learning a new skill, especially Python and uh, you know any new skill that you haven't quite you know grasped before, um, be patient with yourself, but give yourself extra time. So, for instance, if you're like I can only do um, an hour earlier today, an hour later today, maybe an hour in the middle. That's fine. Fit it in, but just. Be okay with doing what you can. Um, okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, one of the things that I wanted to actually go over, and let me stop sharing my screen for a second. Let's see if it'll let me. There we go. Okay. Um, give me one second here. So one of the things I often get people asking me is, um, how do I decide on projects to work? I want to work on a project. I can't decide. I don't know what to do. Um, there really is no wrong answer, obviously. But some of the things that I would say is um, focus on things that you're passionate about. I want you to find things that make you excited, things that you you know you, that you like, and then find the problem or find an issue and fix it with coding. Um, and I'll kind of give you a couple of examples because I've got a few from some uh, developer friends of mine. So. I've got a friend who is really into Plex. Um, if you don't know what it is, it used to be X, B, and C, but it's a um, it's a, a media center consult, and basically it's a place where you can store all your digital uh, videos and movies, and you can play it on a on a dashboard. And it's open source, so you can actually go in and code out sc uh, skins for it. So you can code out an actual uh, skin for it where it has where you have the play button, how you organize the videos, all that good stuff. Um, and he decided, you know, I'm just going to learn how to code for it. Make a, a skin for it. That's one thing. He found something he's passionate about, and he made himself a skin that he really loves. Um, great for your portfolio. Another one is um, there is a gentleman that was here in Utah. And he noticed that uh, those that are on the reservation, they don't have addresses. They just had, you know, south of this route. <laughs> and so everything got delivered to one place and, you know, it was fine, it worked, you know, but uh, if, let's say they wanted to get a license or they wanted to fill out any legal documents, they couldn't because they didn't have an address. They couldn't put anything down. So what he did was he coded out something with Google so that it would automatically create an address for each person. They would just go on the website, click where they're at on the reservation and it would create, it was just a couple of numbers and a couple of letters, that was their address. And it was amazing because that allowed them to have an address, use what they needed, um, and it solved a problem that he saw. And then the last one is um, back in the start of COVID, uh, there was a high school kid that created a website that would track COVID outbreaks. Um, and it was one of the highest rated websites to go to because he would just pull from other other places th that were reporting it. He just put it all centralized into one um, 
application. That was a problem that he saw that, you know, there's no way of getting a central idea of where everything is. He just created a solution to a problem. So be creative, use what you're passionate about, but build out, build out what you can. Okay, let's see here. All right. Um, oh, okay, yeah, so I got a couple of thank yous. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, Awesome. Okay. If um, you guys ever want to do another one of these, um, if we want to tackle a little bit more in detail, if we want to do uh, kind of an adjacent uh, category to this, let us know. We'll be more than happy to pull something together for you guys. But thank you all for coming. This has been amazing. Um, we'll see you guys next time. So you guys have a, a good one.